the Connecting the World to Him broadcast, the teaching ministry of Heart to Heart International Ministries with Drs. Jerome and Tanya Taylor. Our assignment is to preach the good news to the poor, heal the brokenhearted, deliver the captive, restore sight to the blind, set at liberty them that oppress, proclaim the acceptable year of our Lord according to Luke 4 and 18. So the Spirit of God has us on this relationship series and we're, we're, we're targeting the singles, but yet this is not exempt from the married people. And I believe a lot of married people need these 101 things, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 50, 30, uh, how, many, how many years you've been married? You needed right. this years ago because mm -hmm. I really believe it would alter your decision. Yes. Now, relationships are critical as we've been discussing. And let's pray. Father, thank you for being with thank us you, today. Jesus. Your mm -hmm. presence is here. Hallelujah. Your Shekinah glory is in this house. Our hearts and minds are open to receive the information that you have prepared before the foundation of the world, Father. We ourselves open our hearts and minds to receive this information with gladness, with joy and to have the information that will empower our lives to make better choices in, in, in regards to a mate. I thank you for the hearts of the people that are open to, to receive this information again. It, re, it falls on great hearts. It produces great fruit in their lives so that they can enjoy the benefits of having great relationships with people. We bless you now. We bind distortion, distraction, anything that will hinder the flow of the anointing is bound now, and Jesus, you are Lord. The Holy Spirit is free to move as he will today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so anyway, relationships are critical to our success. So we're, we, you, you, know, you know, how many know that uh, the, the wrong relationships can jack your life up? Amen. For years, and so that's why we, the Spirit of God has us on this, because uh, some of you are getting ready to be remarried, and uh, some of you are starting a second time around but we don't want the second time to be like the first time amen amen we want to be more successful and so thus the spirit of god has us on this information y'all just spare with me here okay <laughs> all right yes yes start all right so anyway the spirit of god wants you all to have very powerful relationships amen. and uh one of the thoughts honey too that uh mm -hmm. spirit of god gave me last night and i really wanted to share with the people because we're talking about 101 things people need to know before uh, while, while they're dating. You're ready to date someone. You need to uh, remember this thought that your life, this is your life you're dealing with. Now, I don't know if you, how you value your life. This is your life you're dealing with. So you want to make sure and remember that there's no question too crazy, far too personal to ask anybody that you're potentially, potentially looking at spending the rest of your life That's with. Right. That's right. So that's what these questions are. They're, they, they, they're, they're, some of them are funny, and some of them may say, Bishop, those, these questions are far too personal for me to ask someone. Mm -hmm. So you got to step back at point one. Your life, this is your life you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Your life is beyond value. <laughs> okay. It's my turn. <laughs> your life is too valuable. You want to go ahead? No, your life is too valuable. Amen. And so thus, these questions, I want them to be a part of your, um, your assessment of the other party, whether you're male or female, of course. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, when you're dating someone, we believe in the biblical uh, traditional marriages. Mm -hmm. And so when you're courting someone, you're ready to date someone, you need to ask these tough questions. Amen. So while you're in this mode of getting to know them, collect as much data about their lives as possible mm -hmm. through observation. We got another uh, some points to give you about observation. Yeah. The, the what we call it the uh, silent, the silent, obs uh, silent something. I don't know we named it other week we was doing it, but then anyway, mm -hmm. we got like like a, a silent evaluation. A silent evaluation where you're gonna mm -hmm. say nothing, just watch. Mm -hmm. But so you need to make sure through observation, internet, Facebook, Twitter, MySpace, HisSpace, YoSpace, dot com, whatever. You have to find out enough information mm -hmm. that will help you to make a godly educated yes. decision yes, yes, yes. based on what God is saying to you and showing you yes. do not be alarmed or afraid to deal with what you're really seeing some of you see flags before you get married right. you saw it before mm -hmm. you got married That's right. you brushed it off and thus when you get married it all comes out how many you know what I'm talking about right. so you have yeah. to be true to yourself during yes. this process yes. Yes. well I want to get excited right there 
Yes. People have to be true to themselves during this process yes. so that they don't waste, you don't have to waste unnecessary time, money, and resources with someone that is not compatible to you or with you. Amen. You really have to get beyond cute and fine. Oh, you gotta. Those two elements, critical. I was dating Pastor Tanya. I had to get past her good looks. I had to get past her hips. I had to get past her lips. Come on. I had to get past <laughs> that. Okay, she's fine. She's cute. Okay, and next. And yes. next. Next. Because I got to find out what cute and fine was inside now. That's right. And I don't Absolutely. know where this terminology to my drunk, junk in the trunk. I don't want nobody with junk in the trunk, okay? Personally. I know what they're saying, but I don't want nobody with junk in the trunk. That's just not a good um, term. Not a good anyway, phrase you can have use. someone with junk in the trunk. <laughs> They can have someone. I don't want nobody on a drug in the trunk. Baggage. To me, that's like coming with baggage. Really, I understand what they're saying. Yeah. I understand what they're saying. But look, don't repeat the stuff the world say either. Please. That's right. I want somebody that's with right. junk in the trunk. No, you don't. They're going to come with enough other baggages. So. <laughs> you have to really get beyond cute and fine. Bow leg, blue eyes, uh, brown eyes, contact eyes, uh, bald eyes, purchase eyes. It doesn't matter. You have to get past all this. For real. For real. And then you got to get back because some people cute is just what they purchase. And they, they rightfully own it. They rightfully own it. You know, so you got you to gotta go way beyond that, you know, to make sure that when this person, you know, go home and take everything off, can I deal with this yeah, for the rest of my right. life? You know what I mean? That's right. You know, so, so when, when this dude, you know, when this dude could go home, take off his toothpaste and all, you know, everything, you know, whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> muscles. And then when she gets Pop home. his muscles off. Yeah. <laughs> What you think it is muscles is not muscles. Look, you know, <laughs> muscles deactivate, and he looking like Urkel. Look, you got to make sure. <laughs> That's right. Yep. And then when she gets home, yeah, you got to make sure she doesn't take off the eyelashes and put them up on the dresser, pull the wig off, all the long hair, and then you pull the wig off, and you realize it's short hair, but you wanted a long hair woman. Okay, and then she takes everything off, and you realize that the big full figure that she had in the front was padded, and all the hips were extra padding, and you really thought she had junk in her trunk, but she puts that on a hanger until tomorrow morning. Hey, if you is want your it, honey you on the hanger in the house? No, but but <laughs> and look. then you're standing in the room talking about honey. Somebody just broke into our house. It's me, honey. It's me. No, really. It's <laughs> anyway, we make it as a bit facetious, but hey, listen, that's just why we need you to ask the yes. right questions. And, honey, and cause they even have after to. You, they have even to. after you ask the right questions, you get with some of the married folks, and what will they tell you? Girl, yeah. even after you marry him, girl, you still find out something new every single day. But at least you don't feel so bad because you found out, um, you know, the basic, the yes. important things that you needed to find yeah. out up front. And I know? guarantee, as you assess, as we're giving this information, yeah. and we, you know, we like to have fun when we do it, I guarantee after hearing this information, the whole 101 about the 101 ways, you mm -hmm. will find out that the information you're finding out right now is some of these 101 questions that you needed. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? It's not like every day you find out something. It's like you just find out stuff as you go. Yeah. So. But you, you may find it out yeah, one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I then mean, the next day you need to figure out how am I going to deal with this. Yeah, the reality of it. But see, this is the thing. We must find out as much, pos we do. As much as possible as possible yes. with this individual mm -hmm. so that you won't have any surprises later right. that, will rise its, that will rise its head yeah. to challenge the marriage. And based on the level of information discovered, it could destroy the marriage. That's right. That's the reality. That's right. I married this woman here not to get divorced. That you know, that's that was right. my that's my heart. You know what I mean? Until we that those part and, and so on and so forth. So, but I, I really wanted to know. I didn't know. Uh, we knew some of this. We didn't know all. Right, of it. not all of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you, Jesus. And so you know, <laughs> we have uh, been together 19 years, going on yes. 22 years knowing each other. But it's been a wonderful journey. I'm yes, faithful, faithful man of God. Husband, one wife, wife, one husband. No boyfriends, no girlfriends. No girlfriends. So God has been yes. faithful that Amen. we have worked through Amen. even some of the challenges. Well, Amen. There were some challenges, yes. Amen. Yeah. But we did have questions for one another. And so thus yes. we, God has over the years developed things in us like this that we're given to you so that you don't have to make any mistakes. So we want you all to have healthy relationships, especially when you're looking at uh, hooking up with someone for the rest of your life. Amen. Your life partner. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Your, right. your, 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 you know, your snuggles, your boo, whatever you want to call them, <laughs> your boo-boo, whatever. Look, you need to make sure that they're the right people. Now, mm -hmm. 
This is what we're going to do. I'm a, uh, let, let, yes, go ahead. Share? Mm -hmm. Let's share a scripture so yes. everybody will understand why it is so important that we bring this information mm -hmm. based on the word of God. You know, we like Amen. to support That's everything yes. uh, with, with, a, with the biblical basis. Hosea 4 and chapter 6 speaks. And if you need a Bible, raise your hands. Oh, yeah, if you assistant. need a Bible. Okay, yes. Um, my ushers, yeah, thank you. Amen. Hosea 4 and 6. Um, and that scripture tells us, it says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And the part that really stands out to me is the my people. Yeah. And so here we're in church. Somebody may feel, why are we talking about this in church? I can go home and watch this on Oprah. I can go home and watch this on, on, on is David Letterman still on? No. No. Is yeah, he it? is? Yeah, okay. okay. Um, I, can, I can go home and watch this on TV, and, and I can watch Jerry Springer and them throw chairs, and they can, you know, teach me about why are we talking about this in church. All right, but the Bible says my people. He's talking about his people, that we are destroyed, individually destroyed, relationships destroyed, yes. children destroyed, families destroyed. Why? Amen. Because of a lack of and information. You know, that's powerful, honey. You know, we live in yeah. such a, we live in such an information age. Yes. And so thus, we understand, I made the statement earlier, we have to find out enough that will help us to make a godly, educated decision. Exactly. See, the Bible here says, it's, it doesn't say we perish because of knowledge. Right. It says we perish because of a lack, lack of, of it. Knowledge. We don't mm -hmm. have enough. And then we which also. means that we have to continue to gather enough. Yeah. And then we make this, then we make our godly decision right. based on. The facts that we, all the information that we feel that we have to make a, a real godly de uh, uh, decision, educated choice in regards to a relationship. So many of us make decisions on half information, misinformation. And again, the That's scripture right. is clear, not enough. Not enough. Not enough. Amen. And we have to make sure that the principles that we are living out, that the information that we receive, the principles are godly principles. Mm -hmm. Okay? This is real serious. I've got to follow love as God has ordained it. Otherwise, I could be outside of that parameter, as we were saying. People now have what we call alternative lifestyles. Well, their alternative lifestyle is not supported by Scripture. So while I am developing my basis of information, developing, getting my database strong, with God's principle on relationships, I got to make sure I'm doing it God's style and not by the principles of the world. The world says, try it before you buy it. God says, no fornicating. That's right. That's no, right. See, so, so this is, so while we're talking information, I don't want you to think you can just go sit in a college classroom and you can get your PhD, D, 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 and all of that and still not be in line with the word of God and the principles of God. Now, if you want it some other way, sure, it is out there. You can get that. The Bible says, choose ye this day whom you will serve. Right. So you have, you, you can be pro-choice. Yeah. That's right. That's right. But I'm going to tell you, if you're going to do it God's way, and you want, it, God, you want a godly marriage, you want a Christian marriage, then you come to God's principles for that marriage. And then you have to make sure that you're basing it on the word and the will of God for your life. Because so many times we'll get together and we'll find that we're bringing godly principles into worldly principles. And we're trying to somehow see if we can make the two work. And you know what's powerful too, honey, just a thought of, uh, the thought of just the fact we're sharing this information, why is critical? Because I believe if you think about, most of you understand this, this thought. If you don't have the right person in your life, it's going to jack up your finances. Absolutely. It's going to jack, jack up your mental capacity to think clear through you life. You better tell it. It could jack up a whole lot of stuff. So this is important. You may think, well, I want to hear about this day. No, this is important. Because if you get the wrong person in your life, everything is going to be impacted by that by choice. That, yeah. You've been watching the Connecting the World to Him broadcast. We pray that your life has been tremendously blessed. Join us next week as we bring another dynamic word from God.